Peru has long been a place of ancient mysteries. It was home to one of the most famous ancient civilizations, the Incas. People from all over the world come to see places like Machu Picchu and the mysterious Nazca Lines. However, far few people are aware of another mysterious part of Peru, a place called the Band of Holes. Around 6,000 holes near Pisco in Peru form the mighty and enigmatic Band of Holes, which is the subject of an enormity of theories as to what it is, and only truly appreciated as an ancient wonder for the ages when seen from above. Wait to hear this. Recent conclusions suggest that the thousands of holes are storage vessels constructed during a time of great upheaval in the region. The band of holes stretches almost one mile from the top of the mountainous region all the way down to the level valley below. The holes are almost one metre in diameter and range between the depth of 50 and 100 centimetres. Their width ranges from 14 and 21 metres, starting at the edge of the valley and continuing up a hill for one mile. The band of holes extends in an off-south orientation over a very uneven, rocky surface. In 1933, the National Geographic magazine published photos captured by the aviator Robert Scheipe, which brought the strange pattern of holes into the public's attention, and since then, theories have been rife regarding the use of an ancient gigantic wheel responsible for a lot of the strange geological features present in the Nazca region. All around the world, godlike perceptions occur. The great figure that once appeared in the sky, could these holes be bunkers for explorers in ancient times who may have used them in an attempt to get closer to the god that appeared to them? The son of the god of the golden light, and of course to the people of Peru, worshipped by the Inca and also the pre-Inca people, Viracocha was worshipped as a god of the sun and of storms. He was presented as wearing the sun for a crown with thunderbolts in his hands and tears descending from his eyes as rain. Victor Wolfgang von Hagen, in 1953, suggested that these holes were similar to graves found elsewhere in the Inca Empire, with mummies and pottery present. Because of the similarities, he had suggested that these holes were simply unused graves, empty, unused graves that snakes uphill for almost one mile, like the serpent itself nonetheless. Other theories suggest that the holes may be used for farmers to leave tributes in the thousands of depressions running upslope. The consensus seems to be that the holes were made for storing something, but exactly what remains unclear. Despite the fact that previous generations of archaeologists knew about the site, no excavations have been conducted and no obvious artefacts have ever been found near the holes, there is no agreement on when they were built, by who, by what culture, let alone what they are, no one knows. In 2015, archaeologists surveyed the band of holes with the use of a drone. They collected aerial images and created a new, detailed map of the band of holes, which they estimate is made up of between 5,000 and 6,000 depressions, but possibly as many as 7,000. While others have maintained that the sheer number of holes at the band of holes makes it unlikely that prehistoric people could have constructed it on their own. The aerial archaeologist calculates that if created all at once, the band of holes could have been completed by a team of 100 workers in one month. A smaller group of 10 workers could have made it in perhaps 300 days, though it's likely the holes were dug gradually over a very long period of time. As impressive a feat of engineering as the band of holes appears, a well-organised group of people would have had no trouble creating it, but why they undertook this construction is anybody's best guess. Perhaps they are just water-collecting vessels, but the lack of artefacts that has been found near the site has made it extremely difficult to pinpoint the exact purpose. As William James Veal wrote in August 2015, to date this site has revealed no real artefactual evidence whatsoever. Just a path of empty holes, excavated into a limestone escarpment for no apparent rhyme or reason. Local residents have no record of who made the holes or what their purpose was, as nothing in their ancient mythologies offers an explanation. Findings by archaeologists and anthropologists 
are also non-conclusive. At some stage in the ancient past, an ancient people thought this was a good idea to solve some sort of problem that they had in their existences. Were the holes used to collect taxes from local farmers, unused graves for the dead, holes to get closer in a pilgrimage to the great figure in the sky? Perhaps for collecting water in some sort of feat of engineering brilliance, or perhaps they are remnants of something else that we simply do not understand. Whatever they are, they are certainly unlike anything else present on our world today. But what do you guys think about these strange depressions anyway? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching. So if each one of these had a plant in it, it would require quite a crew to be able to keep them watered. The Pisco River, as you can see, is not that far away, so there could have literally been something like a bucket brigade um, handing water in some kind of vessels from one to the next, to the next, to the next, in order to keep the plants alive. Um, again, we found no human remains in any of the holes. We found no pottery, so I honestly think Senior Juan Navarro was correct in his idea that this was a giant green snake that could be seen from a distance and of course, like the famous Nazca lines and geoglyphs, could be seen from the air. Very mysterious. Nazca is about four hours drive south of here and the famous candelabro created by the Paracas culture is about one hour's drive away in the Paracas Bay. It's approximately 500 feet tall. And in between the candelabro and Nazca are the Palpa geoglyphs, of which there are about 1,000. They're not as large as the Nazca geoglyphs, such as the famous hummingbird and the monkey, but they are quite strange. You can look them up um, through Google Images or an equivalent. Trying to give directions as to how to get to the band of holes is very difficult because first you drive on the highway, which is simple, but then you have to go off-road. So a better recommendation would be for you to come and visit me, and then I could guide you to see this interesting wonder, as well as Less than 15 minutes drive away is Tambo, Colorado, which was a major Inca site. So once again, if you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up. Have a look at the other approximate 900 videos on my YouTube channel. And stay tuned for more because I am constantly filming and producing more content for your viewing entertainment and to expand your field of knowledge. Astronomers witness the death of a star for the first time. Yes, supernovas are usually detected only after they explode, but this time the star was spotted 130 days before its forever demise. For the first time astronomers have observed the final days and death rows of a red supergiant star before the final collapse and massive explosion into a supernova. Supernovas are usually only detected after they happen, although a few of a different type have been caught in the act of exploding. In this case, scientists detected the star in its final stages about 130 days before it detonated, and they were able to watch it grow progressively brighter and at last blow up. It's like watching a ticking time bomb, says astrophysicist Raffaella Marguti, who is the senior author of a study of the supernova, published last week in Astrophysical Journal, and she said in a statement, We've never confirmed such violent activity in a dying, red, supergiant star where we see it produce such a luminous emission, then collapse and combust, until now that is. Although the star was in a galaxy about 120 million light years away, both the star and the galaxy are too faint to be seen with the naked eye, but the data from the Pan Stars Observatory showed that the star had become much brighter than usual. The scientists then kept watching the star with the Pan Stars telescope which showed 
it was violently ejecting large amounts of gas. When the final supernova explosion did occur, they were able to capture the most powerful flash it emitted for a brief moment. It was brighter than all the other stars in the galaxy combined, and that is thanks to Kiara's ability to remotely operate the telescope at the WM Keck Observatory atop Mauna Kea on Hawaii. The supernova flash and the observations that followed showed the star was surrounded by shells of gas when it exploded, probably the same gas it had emitted in the months leading up to the detonation. A few other supernovas have been seen before, but not of this type. Instead, they've typically been seen when a giant star has collided with its binary companion. But in this case, there seemed to be no other stars involved with the explosion. Observations made after the explosion suggest that the star was about 10 times larger than our sun is, near the lower end of the range of stars that become supernovas. Stars like our sun are too small to ever become supernovas. They'll probably expand and then shrink into a white dwarf at the end of their lifetimes. Smaller stars also last several billions of years, and that's because they're not so large that they burn up all their fusion, fuel, in a short time. Red giants like the supernova in this study, however, can use their fuel in only a few hundred million years, and then collapse when they can't carry any more fusion. The final supernova event is caused by the outer shells of the star bouncing off its own core. That propagates outward and unbinds the whole star. It rips through the star and pushes all the layers out really fast. Supernovas, of course, are the final stages for many stars, and they are responsible for seeding interstellar clouds of gas and dust with heavy, chemical elements. The clouds seeded by the explosions then coalesce into younger stars like the sun and the elements, such as carbon, oxygen, silicon and iron, are incorporated into these planets. Previously, the old age of massive stars have been almost impossible to observe, said Matt Nicol, a lecturer in physics and astronomy at the University of Birmingham. Before now, we've never been able to study this crucial phase directly, and he said that in an email. Matt Nicol was not involved in the latest study, but he had a team that observed directly the brightest supernova ever seen, and he said dedicated robotic telescopes like the PanStars could now survey the sky, looking for explosive events like supernovas, and more were likely to be found as the surveys become more effective. Experts point to a similar star, Eta Carina, about 7,500 light years away, which is emitting vast clouds of gas and becomes much brighter for many years at a time, but then fades away again without exploding. They have seen a brightening before the explosion, but there's no way to know that the star didn't go and do the same thing 10 years ago. So we don't know whether the two things are related or not. 